on The Farmer's Daughter, I wanted to talk to you about tomatoes. Tomatoes are one of our favorite things to plant in most gardens, and they can be very simple to grow, but also you do need to know a little bit about tomatoes to have a successful crop. So we're planting tomatoes. The trick to planting tomatoes is planting them deep enough and giving them enough space to actually grow out. The deeper the root system on a tomato, the healthier it tends to be. The reason why a deep root system is so important for a tomato is it makes it a little bit more drought tolerant um, and it allows the tomato to be able to absorb and um, eat up more of those nutrients, if you will. So on a tomato plant, every little um, hair on the tomato is, is capable of turning into a root system. So if you either, um, if you don't have the ability to plant your tomato deep, um, you can kind of trench it and um, send your, your stem upwards um, or go as deep as you can. Even if your tomato stem is say only five inches, plant maybe four of that deep. It will come above ground, it'll make up for it, and you will have a healthier, stronger tomato. And you want to water them well, but you also don't want to overwater them. Tomatoes do not like to have wet feet. Whenever you hear that term wet feet, it means it doesn't like to have soggy roots. Um, that can Those roots could rot and then your tomato dies. So another really important thing about planting your tomatoes is making sure that they are, are staked or have a cage, especially if they are indeterminate. So you may hear the term indeterminate and determinate um, thrown around a lot. So basically what that means is determinate is, think of it as the tomato is already determined on how tall it's going to grow. Um, these tend to be your bushier tomatoes and they also tend to harvest their fruit almost all at once. They will ripen all at once. An indeterminate tomato, um, it's kind of indetermined on how tall that tomato plant actually might grow. And it also will um, harvest at different varying stages throughout the season. So whether you want your tomatoes to can or to freeze or you want them throughout the season to um, put in your salads or, or whatever else you're doing with them. Um, determine whether you want a all at once crop in a determinate or a throughout the season in an indeterminate. Also determinate tomatoes do best if you are going to plant them on your patio because they do tend to be bushy and they maybe don't need as much of a root system. So those are also things to keep in mind. Another thing with your tomatoes is overcrowding. So this was one of the common mistakes I first made while planting tomatoes when I was a newbie gardener is I wanted so many tomatoes, I wanted so many varieties that I would plant them too close together. Tomatoes need air to, to be able to um, ripen and that air circulation going through those leaves. So if you've crowded them, um, you've kind of pre prevent, or preventing them from being able to set on fruit and ripen. So in my four by four um, beds, which is 16 square feet, I put roughly nine tomatoes. Um, in my opinion, a tomato, if it's a indeterminate, you can get away with probably 12 inches in between. And if it's a determinate and it's gonna get bushier, you want about that 18 inches. You might think to yourself, oh, but I need tomatoes. I need more tomatoes. I need to pack them in. You actually will get fewer tomatoes for more plants if you overcrowd them. But if you go ahead and give them the space, they will produce for you. So don't overcrowd. So I'm going to show you really quick how I actually plant a tomato. Now bear with me. I'm actually going to be doing this one handed um, because I do need to still hold the camera. All right, so I have this beautiful tomato plant here. Um, he is of a big boy variety. And um, he is well past his stage of needing to be transplanted. He actually is even starting to get a few little um, blooms here. So I wanted to come in close to show you. To see if you can see all those little hairs on the tomato. Those are all those little hairs I was telling you about that if it's planted in the ground, they will grow roots. Now, before we plant this guy, he is in a four inch pot. So 
So I know already that he's got approximately four inches of root system underneath his stem. But see these bottom leaves here? I'm gonna go ahead and prune that off. And that way I can grow, I can actually bury him another inch deeper and give him another inch underneath that soil. Um, and especially because he's going to become a really big plant. So we're gonna go ahead and dig him right in. Well, hello there. So I have a friend here who has just joined me in the garden and he wants to steal my glove. So we'll be right back to you while I play tug of war. <laughs> Are you going to shake my paw, Blue? <laughs> so Blue is my friend here at the community garden. He stops. Oh, are you going to eat my radish plants? He stops and visits me every time he comes up. And now he's going after my weeds. So thanks for stopping by, Blue. Okay, thank you so much. All right, we're going to get back to our tomato soon. Well, back to the tomato. So this guy is, is ready to transplant. So now that I've got that bottom one pruned, and I'm even going to prune this little thing here. This is what's called a sucker. And this little bit here that grows in between, it's never going to bear any fruit. So the reason why they're called suckers is because they actually will just suck all the nutrients up and grow. But some people say that they want to remove them and it makes the plant grow bigger and taller some philosophy is it doesn't matter at all um, when i'm first planting i will go ahead and prune the tomato up um, just to give it that go start but throughout the season i typically don't bother um, pulling those suckers off unless one really does seem to be um, sucking all the nutrients away and slowing my plant down so anyhow in this bed i actually have a mixture of plants um, it is my nightshade companion bed. So I have bell peppers and eggplants as well as my tomatoes in this bed. Um, they all are of the nightshade family and they all are wonderful companions as well as my marigolds. Marigolds are a fantastic companion plant for just about anything in the garden because they really do bring in pollinators and they deter a lot of pests. Um, this year, I also have chosen a separate companion to add in as I have planted some red and white onions. So I have actually bordered my garden beds with the onions, which will grow well into the fall. Um, they I put in between my marigold plants. So the smell of the onion will also help deter a lot of different pests. Um, and some people say that planting an onion with a tomato plant can sometimes make them sweeter. I don't actually have them planted close enough to where they probably will do that, but they will act as a nice deterrent. So, but back to planting this tomato as I promised. So I am going to be about 18 inches from my pepper plants and my eggplants. And I am going down as deep as this garden bed will allow me, which that's probably about a five to six inch hole. So I'm going to loosen up the plant in the pot, just kind of by, if you squeeze the pot a little bit, that'll loosen the roots and allow it to come right out. All right, so I've removed my plants. Look at all those beautiful roots. So I've made my hole actually not quite large enough to be able to put that root ball in. So I'm actually going to just widen my hole a little bit because I don't want to disturb those roots too much. I don't want to can compact them. So that should hold that root ball. And then now I'm just going to put that nice, rich soil right back up. Now see how I've got it right next to that next um, leaf. So that I'm going to actually prune as well. 
and even kind of bring this in to a little bit of a mound. Now you want to press that firmly, but not compact it. You don't want compacted soil because that is gonna prevent air from being able to come around into your tomato plants. And once we're all set here, I'm going to have to give it a really good watering. When you are watering your tomato, you want to make sure that you water at the base and you don't wanna actually get that water on the, the foliage. Um, that could actually help um, harm the tomato plant. It could grow a fungus or get blight. Um, also on a nice hot day, if you're watering and the water droplets get onto the leaves, you could burn your tomato. So you don't wanna do that. Now let's take a quick look at some of our companions here. We do have a little tiny pepper set on. And nothing happening quite yet with the eggplant, but they look fantastic. Now, looking at some of my onions, every little leaf on an onion represents a layer. So a couple of those over there, I have got three coming on four onion layers so far. Very, very exciting. So as these tend to grow, I will end up staking them. Um, what I do up here at the community garden is I end up putting um, twine from one hoop to the next and then running another twine and I stake it down to the ground and give the tomato that support via that twine rather than having to use cages or buy nine poles for every single um, plant that I have up here. That to me allows nice airflow and it's also a cheaper, more inexpensive way to stake my tomatoes. So I am now home from the community garden after our, our very short tutorial on tomato plants. I could talk about tomato plants for hours, but I know you don't have hours to talk about tomato plants. So I just wanted to give you a very short, brief, but hopefully informative on how to get yourself started on tomato plants. So now that I'm back home, I wanted to give you an update on my sugar snap peas and my snow peas. Earlier this spring, I had planted them and um, wanted to give you the update on how they're doing. A little bit of history about peas. Did you know that sugar snap peas were actually not first created, cultivated, whatever you want to call it, till around the late 1970s, um, which is why now we can eat the pea pods of our sugar snap peas. Before then, we just had our snow peas and our snap pea varieties. So there's a little bit of history or fun garden trivia that you might be able to use to impress your other gardening friends. But let's get down to what we need to do to plant our peas. So the first thing I've done is I've been watching the weather and I have been checking the temperature of my soil. Right now my soil is approximately 46 degrees. You do not want to plant your peas if your soil is below 40 degrees. Your peas simply just will not germinate. And you do not want to plant them if your soil temperature rises above 70 because then the weather and the soil will be too hot to help support the tender young pea plants. They are a cold crop which means that they do better in the cooler temperatures than when um, the sun gets really, really hot um, in you know, like your June, July, and August months. So my soil is 45, it's perfect, so let's get started. So the first thing I did is yesterday, I cleared out all the weeds and I gave the soil a little bit of extra boost with some of my compost mixture. Um, peas, naturally, it being in the legume family, will put nitrogen into your soil. So I just wanted to put a little bit of compost in there to help balance out the, um, the bed being too nitrogen heavy. Um, so that way all those other wonderful nutrients that the peas might need to utilize are in there. 
So now that my soil is ready to go, my bed's ready to go, I have dug a trench. The trench I would say is probably about just under an inch deep. So I am going to place my peas roughly one to two inches apart um, down that trench and then cover. So I will show you that in a moment. So I did a little prep work before planting my peas. So I took um, my seed packet and um, these are the snow peas and I did soak them for at least four hours. By soaking them um, just kind of helps prepare loosening that outer shell as well as helping them germinate faster and I do find the difference and I would get a better crop. Now when you are prepping your seeds you want to make sure that you don't have any of them that are split. So see this seed here that is split? That I will not plant because he will not grow. You can only plant whole seeds. So I have now placed my peas in the row. Um, as you can tell, some of them got a little bit closer than the other. Um, I could choose to go back and place those evenly, but over the years I have discovered that it does not really affect my crop at all, whether I am being like super, super diligent on making sure they are placed exactly apart um, because being a little bit close together, they will still grow and climb. And I do have a trellis already in place. I do plant them along my fence and I put this, it's similar to fish wire trellis and they will start to climb. And I don't have it, you know, nailed all the way down to the bottom or attached to the bottom because those young pea plants will grow and grab those bottoms and start to climb themselves. And the ones that do not, I'll be able to train them easily. So now it is time for me to cover them up. So I'm going to just loosely put the dirt back over. So now I've gone through the entire bed where I just planted and I covered the soil over the peas that I planted. I did a very, very, when I say very lightly pat down to the soil just to again make sure that it is kind of uh, mildly even, but I did not pack it down or compact it in any way. That could actually help hinder my young plants from growing. So it is mid-April and I am rolling the dice and hoping that we do not get another deep freeze. Um, we still may get a light frost um, or two, but I think that we are past the deep freeze. So I went ahead and did a soft open of my rain barrel. So I have used my water can and filled it with my collected rainwater from already this year's spring rains. And I gave it a good soaking. And I will just monitor this over the next few days and into the next weeks to make sure that they are um, adequately watered to make sure that that does not dry out and my young plants can grow. Snow peas are one of my family's favorite things to grow. That is probably one of the first things I started growing in my garden. They are relatively easy to grow as long as you know the few pointers on what to do on not planting too soon or too late and keeping them watered. And I, uh, one of the things I love about planting this vegetable is my kids will come out to the garden just for snacks that the family joke is that I really don't know how many peas that I actually really get to harvest because very few of them actually make it in the house because they are typically gobbled up in the garden or in the yard. And the reason why I love that is it's, it's almost like a family trait is as a child growing up on the farm, we had a very sizable garden as you can imagine. Um, but it was fenced off and my mother had the rule that when my sister Dawn and I were out playing um, for endless hours out in the yard and out in the creek, we were not allowed to go in the garden. But we wanted those, those snap peas so we could open up those pods and eat those sweet little peas because they were such a yummy snack and we didn't have to go back in the house and we could stay, out, stay outside playing. So we discovered that the fence that she was growing the peas up on was adjacent to the backyard. So if we ate the pea pods that grew on the yard side of the fence, 
we could harvest them and have a snack and not disobey her because we did not go in the garden like she requested. But we would have all of the pea shells left over because remember, they weren't sugar snap peas at that point. They were still just snap peas. So what did we do with the evidence of our crime? Well, we simply went and fed those shells to the chickens and no one was the wiser. So actually just this past summer, I told my mother the secret of what Dawn and I had been doing. Um, I think she had suspected it, but getting the confirmation, she just had to laugh and giggle and shook her head and said, you girls. So I hope your family can also have some wonderful memories starting a garden and planting sugar snap peas or snow peas. So my sugar snap peas are behind me. So I'm about 5'3". So you'll see that they have reached um, six foot by now. And then my snow peas are a little bit shorter. So I'm gonna give you a quick peek at those. So the snow peas only get about four. They might actually get up to four and a half feet. But as you can see, I am in the midst of an abundance of harvests. I have harvested my peas three or four times already. Um, and I still am getting blooms. We got a nice bloom there. So this is a snow pea. They're a nice flat pea. Um, so this one, he's ready um, to pick. As you'll see, the little bloom has already fallen off the bottom. And I wanna snap it right at the end. So that way more blooms will continue to come. And he is ready for the picking. Now I wanted to show you one that maybe needs to grow a little bit longer. Um, so this guy, he still has the end, so I'm going to leave him on a little bit longer because he hasn't shed um, that bloom tip yet. But as you can see, I have an abundance that are ready to be harvested. And as they grow, I do give them just a little bit of help. I'll take it and I'll tuck him behind the net and see how that automatically just wants to grab that. And that's how I've gotten them to grow right up the net. And then we come back over to my sugar snap peas. And these guys have outgrown my six foot fence. They're all the way up there. And I do still have plenty of blooms on those but I also am getting a really wonderful harvest with these so these are my family's one of our favorite things to eat now in the spring when I planted my peas I also did a companion plant with them with my spinach. Now the spinach, I have just harvested that the other day, so I don't really have a lot of it, but I just wanted to show you um, some of the spinach planting below. Spinach and peas are a wonderful companion. The peas will set off nitrogen into the soil and the spinach really is a heavy nitrogen feeder not to mention the peas will help shade the spinach so it doesn't bolt too fast so that's all for today we will get an update as our tomatoes get growing and i'm going to harvest the rest of my peas but i might have a few before i take them into the house mm -hmm.